Happy Sabbath, happy day. Uh, thank you for joining us again for this lesson. Uh, we are glad that you are here and you've been following this wonderful lesson through the book of Psalm. Today, we are going to study, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It is something I know that we have been looking at through the week, but at least on this Sabbath, we are just going to do a recap and learn from one another. We encourage you to comment, to give us your views, to ask questions, and join us in the study actively, participate actively. Um, but before we go any, other, any further with the study, I'd like that Ian pray for us. Sure. Um, let us pray. Father, what in heaven, we once again come before your throne of mercy this morning. Thank you for your sustainers and your protection throughout um, the week, for allowing us to set foot into the holidays of the Sabbath. As we begin the Sabbath by studying your word, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Pray that you will tabernacle with us. Pray that you will grant us the gift of the Holy Spirit to incline our thoughts to issues divine and above all to lead us to all truth. As we begin to the very end, I pray that you may be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please say hi to us. I starting from Irene. Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Irene. Welcome to this in uh, session. May you be blessed. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. My name is Ian. I'm mm. glad to be here today. Karibu sana. Good morning and happy Sabbath. My name is Billy. I'm happy that we're studying this lesson together. May God be with you. Amen. Thank you. I'm Rumona Pio. And we'll together study this lesson. And we pray that the Holy Spirit may really open to us issues divine. Uh, our memory text comes from the book of Psalm 118, verse 22 and 23. New King James Version is where I'm reading from. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. You know, beloved, when we are reading the book of Psalms, or rather when you are even reading the book of the Bible as a whole, we tend to associate Christ with the four Gospels, or rather even the New Testament as a whole. But Christ has been the center of the whole Bible, both the New and the Old Testament. And today, we are going to just understand the centrality of Jesus Christ in the book of Psalms. The topics that are revealed in Psalms about Jesus are, include... Christ's deity, his sonship, his obedience, his zeal for God's temple, his identity as the good shepherd, his betrayal, his suffering, his bones not being broken, his death, resurrection, ascension, priesthood, and kingship. It is all there. The life of Christ is all there laid, laid out in the book of Psalms. And as you're going to look in different days, starting with Sunday, divine self-sacrificing shepherd and i know the leading verse for us in this book will be psalms chapter 23 and really just john chapter 10 and i'd love to ask um billy to please just lead us through uh, thank you so much uh ramona for introducing the lesson uh, nine so sunday part uh, introduces us uh to a true shepherd mm. uh the Lord is described. There are various texts. Psalms 23, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, mm. I shall not want. And he continues to say the things that the shepherd does for mm. us, for mm. his sheep. Mm. So uh, we, are, we want to discuss like the various attributes of this divine self-sacrificing mm. shepherd. Mm. So uh, John chapter 10 mm. uh, talks about uh, Jesus being the true shepherd mm. and also Jesus being the good shepherd and also the sheep. Uh, uh, the shepherd knowing his sheep and of course the sheep knowing uh, his voice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to read uh, John chapter 10 mm -hmm. uh, from verse 11 just so that we get certain attributes of this true and this good shepherd yes. in Jesus. Mm -hmm. John chapter 10 verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. The shepherd gives his life for the sheep mm -hmm. but a hurling he who is not a shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. Mm. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Mm. The hireling flees because of a hireling, because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. So there are various attributes that I'd like us to, to 
point out uh, mm. from that text that we have dis- uh, we have read. Mm. So first of all, uh, Jesus describes himself. Actually, mm. if you read, uh, I mean, not if you read, but certain Bible, including mine, uh, there are certain texts in the Bible that are written in red or in yeah. other another highlighted, color. Yeah. Hi- highlighted. Mm. Those are exact words of Jesus himself. Mm. So this includes them. So Jesus is describing himself as mm. the true shepherd, mm. as the good shepherd. And he describes himself because of some reasons mm-hmm. or some attributes. Mm. The first one, in uh, verse 11, he says, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Mm. So it means that uh, he gives his life. He's and he describes ready. that mm. in uh, the next uh, verse mm. where he gives us an analogy mm. of a hireling mm. who is not uh, the shepherd, who mm. is not like the owner of the sheep. Mm. Uh, when he sees a wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. But him himself, who is the owner of the sheep, the mm-hmm. true shepherd, mm. when uh, danger is coming, then he's willing to sacrifice his mm-hmm. life for uh, for the sheep. Mm. Uh, that is why he even describes himself as divine self-sacrificing. He's mm. willing to experience the danger mm. because so that his sheep are safe, and mm. that. He, he died for our sins. Yeah, laying down yeah, he his laid, life. Yeah, mm. yeah, he laid his, down his life for mm. us. Mm. Then I also learned something mm. that uh, by taking care of the flock, mm. taking care of the sheep, they don't necessarily make you a sheep. A uh, shepherd, I mean. Mm. Uh, and uh, I reflected on when I was uh, a young boy taking care of my father's mm. uh, cows, my mm. father's cattle. Mm. Uh, when... Uh, I, I thought I was a shepherd then, but mm. I just thought that I was a hireling. I mm. was just, uh, I was not the true owner. Mm. And sometimes, of course, if danger would come, I would leave the I would leave the Sometimes kettle. you'd go and play and forget about Yeah, I would go and them. play and forget <laughs> and they go into people's uh, <laughs> gardens and they eat maize and uh, in the evening, it's a case. Yeah. So sometimes, uh, mm. yeah. Mm. But uh, a true shepherd mm. does not leave his sheep and he yeah. knows them. Uh, he knows his sheep. Mm. He knows them by name. Mm. And that describes the relationship mm. that this true shepherd mm. has with his with his sheep. Mm. We are his sheep. Mm. Uh, and I think uh, also just to relate it with what the overall theme is saying, blessed mm. is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Anybody who comes in the name of the Lord mm. is simply somebody who s- submits himself mm. under the stewardship of, of this okay. true shepherd. Mm. So uh, he knows us by our names. Mm. He knows the problems we are going through. Our relationship with this true shepherd, with Jesus, mm. is a personal relationship in the sense that uh, he doesn't see us as a community. Mm. He knows us by name. He knows Ian, mm. he knows Billy, he mm. knows Ramona, he mm. knows Irene. Mm. So when you're facing a, a challenge, God knows about him. Just talk mm. to him as if you're, you're the only child yeah. of God, as if you're the yeah. only sheep. Mm. And God is interested in, in your life. Mm. Uh, verse 15 says he's willing to lay down his life for the sheep. Mm. And that we have described and given, given that analogy. Mm. And uh, verse 16 was a bit interesting. In the sense that, uh, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them mm. I also must, must bring, bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Amen. So Amen. Uh, God is in, the Jesus is interested mm. in even the sheep who are not of this fold. Mm. He has a burden for the souls, mm. and so uh, as people, we also need to equally take up that burden. Mm. And that is why we are charged to go out and spread this word. We need to have a burden for the people, the sin the sinful world, our friends at work and the people who haven't identified with Jesus Christ, mm. this true shepherd. Mm. Uh, we have a responsibility just as uh, our shepherd has this responsibility and mm. has this interest mm. uh, that we may, that they may come and we form one fold mm. and have one, mm. and one, uh, one shepherd. Mm. So I think that is uh, just a high level view of mm. what I, the attributes that I could pick mm. from this divine self-sacrificing shepherd. Amen. Thank you so much. I, I like the point that you bring out in verse 16 and the other sheep I have which are, of, are not of this fold. Them I, them I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Clearly Jesus' pen is not full. You know, Christ is not thinking that where will I get the water to, to feed this sheep? How will I be able to to look after all these ones. He's telling them, come, come, come. And there is a favorite hymn in Swahili, Mchungaji Mpenzi, yeah, Hukuita Uze. I know there is an English version, but the Swahili version really makes sense to this uh, uh, 
uh, this chapter that you have read. Thank you, Billy, for that elaborate, high-level comment. Uh, Irene, please, what are your comments? Okay, I love the the title, the Sunday title, Divine Self-Sacrificing mm. Shepherd. Mm. He is divine in that he is of... Uh, is not of this world. Amen. Yeah, so Amen. he knows everything that the sheep needs. Mm. He's self-sacrificing. Uh, self mm. And as Billy has rightfully said, he mm. lays down his life. Amen. And uh, I am taken back to how the Hebrew setup was. Mm. Then we find that the sheep from various homesteads were put in one pen. Mm. And mm. so the shepherd, one shepherd, would, they, they would take rounds on taking care of the sheep. Mm. So one shepherd would ra just lie on the gate, mm. at the gate, mm. so that the sheep are safe. And if there was anything that would happen to attack the sheep, it would attack the shepherd first. Thanks. Yes, mm. so that is the kind of shepherd we have Amen. with Jesus Christ. Amen. So if there was anything that would attack me, mm then it could attack Christ first mm. because he's self-sacrificing. And another thing that really makes me perplexed or happy mm. is that when we look at John chapter 10, verse 4 and 27, we are told that my sheep hears my voice. And, and so in this come. Hebrew setup, mm. whenever it was time for the sheep to come out, the shepherd could call his sheep. Mm. So like shepherd A would call his sheep, his sheep would follow him. Mm. And none of shepherd B's sheep could we, go to shepherd exactly. A because they know his voice. Mm. And that is what Christ is to us. If yeah. we know his voice, mm. then we are able to hear when he calls mm. and we would follow. Amen. And then now Psalms 23 Amen. talks about mm -hmm. now what this good shepherd does to us, this mm -hmm. great shepherd. John has talk, spoken about in verse 10, in chapter 10. Mm. We are told that this good shepherd uh, supplies all our needs. He is our shepherd, and so we will not want, because he knows everything that we are in need of. He mm. supplies every need mm. as it comes, mm. when it comes. Mm. And then he refreshes us. We, we are told that he makes us lie in green pastures. Mm. We are told that he leads us beside quiet waters and restores our soul. That is rejuvenation. Another thing is that he gives us purpose. And by giving us purpose, we are told that he guides us in the paths of righteousness mm. for his name's sake. Mm. So as a Christian, I am safe in this good shepherd mm. because my purpose is fulfilled in him mm. and through him. Mm. And then we are told again in, in verse 4 that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He has ensured that I am protected. Mm. That even when I get to that valley of the shadow of death, he is already there Amen. to take care of everything Amen. that I need. Mm. He takes care of whatever it is that I am going through. Mm. And then he ensures that he is faithful because we are told that if I, I will fear no evil for he is with me so he is faithful to ensure that everything about me is okay mm. he gives me direction through by his rod and staff which mm. comforts me mm. so his rod is there to discipline me when i go out of the way mm. his staff is there to bind my wounds Amen. because in this world we will go through a lot of this mm. but the good shepherd is there to take care of this mm. And then he also ensures that I am honored because he sets a table before me mm -hmm. in the presence of my enemies. Mm. He consecrates me because he anoints my head with oil. And then he ensures that everything I need is provided as he promises to make my cup mm. overflow. You know, my cup is always running over. Mm. And everything I need, I find in him. And then there is blessings as I follow him all the days of my life. Mm. And that is eternity promised. And mm. the last thing that he is assuring me is presence. That I, when I am stayed in him, mm. when I am dwelling in his house all the days of my life, mm. then I am ensu he's ensuring that his presence is forever with me. Amen. Amen. What a great exposition of Psalm 23. If we juxtapose Psalm 23 and John chapter 10, in the middle there is Jesus. There is Jesus in holiness. And I love the fact that Jesus' imagery of the shepherd and the flock is something that the the Jewish, or rather the people he was talking to, could really easily understand. And Billy has tried to tell us that he, wo he, he thought that he was a shepherd when he was taking care of his father's nini. And there are people who think they are shepherds too, but when danger strikes, or sometimes they wander away and forget the sheep, 
And but Christ is not that kind of uh, shepherd. He's the good shepherd. Yeah. Ian, I don't know what are your thoughts on Sunday. Uh, I know there's there's been a lot that's been said. Yeah. Uh, with a lot you, of passion. <laughs> but I think you, you still have something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, mm. be that as it may, mm. um, Jesus, um, the, the divine self-sacrificing shepherd. Um, in I know we've read John 10 and we've mm. also read um, Psalm 23. Mm. So, when Christ, um, so to speak, was closing his ministry on earth, mm-hmm. uh, he said what some people have termed the Lord's Prayer mm. in John 17. Mm. And John 17, 12 says, uh, which I think brings out one of the you know traits of um, the divine self-sacrificing shepherd. Mm. So John 17, 12 says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. Mm. Those that thou gavest me, I have mm. kept, and none of them is lost by the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. So Christ sort of giving his scorecard, evaluating mm. himself, he says, mm. everyone that you give me, I have kept and none Sadly. of them is lost. Mm. And of course, sadly, that last part, mm. except the child of perdition. Maybe you tell us who's the son of perdition. <laughs> <laughs> I think in that context, it was the betrayer, Judas. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know if the shepherds we have today can confidently say yeah. the ones whom you give me, even at the end of every year. Exactly. The members you give me in the, very, in the various places we find mm. ourselves, the ones mm. whom you give me, I have kept yeah. and none Such of them is lost. Mm. You know, we are not even aware of the ones that are lost, exactly. first of all. So I think as shepherds, we are called upon to, mm. um, like the, the elder says, um, the shepherd knew his sheep, every one of them, right? Mm. Christ knows every one of us individually, right? Mm. And the last part is, uh, when you look at um, the book of Revelation, mm. of course, there is Babylon, the great is fallen. But before that, there is the part that says, come out of her, my people. Mm. Before Babylon is in light of John ten sixteen, other sheep are I who are not of this fall, right? Mm. Um, before Babylon is wholly fallen, mm. the other sheep who are in Babylon have to come out of her, mm. so that it does not, you know, Christ, until the very last moment, mm. you know, Christ still pleads and says, "Come out of her, my people, so that you be not partakers of her sins." Yeah. Amen. There's a question that uh, Ian has asked us. You as a church elder, you as a head of department, you as a deacon or deaconess, you as an evangelist, can you confidently say that those that you have given me, I have kept safely. None of them is lost. Or what, like, that's the question I'm leaving with us for the Sunday part. We move to the suffering Messiah. Please, Ian, take us through. Uh, we have we have studied Psalm 22 mm. in previous weeks. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's uh, let me let me just refrain something from the introduction part that I felt was profound. Mm. So the last paragraph of the um, the introduction Sabbath afternoon part says, mm. in all the psalms, through the psalmist's laments, thanksgivings, praises, and cries for justice and deliverance, we can hear the echoes of Christ's prayer for the salvation of the world. And Ramona has rightly begun by telling us Psalm is a Christ-drenched book, right? Mm. You read through the Psalms and you meet Christ and all these things. Mm. So um, Psalm 22 is actually, um, it's a Psalm Christ quoted, actually the first verse. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? I don't know if primarily David dropped them uh, prophetically or mm. because of the situation he was undergoing, mm. but Christ quoted this Psalm verbatim. So as we talk about the suffering Messiah, it's um, Christ um, when when humanity had fallen into sin, mm. um, the 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 Godhead Christ and His Father sat down and devised mm. a plan mm. through which humanity would be saved, right? Mm. And He knew it from the beginning. So He said, "I'm going to lay aside my mm. glory mm. and I'm going to go down and I'm going to." He knew He was coming to suffer. Exactly. You know, He knew He was coming to suffer. Mm. He knew he was going to, you know, um, he chose a life of depravity. He mm. could have chosen very many, mm. uh, you know, setups, but he chose um, from his very birth. It was a lowly birth. Mm. The children mm. will tell you it was in a manger. It was not in a five-star hospital somewhere. Mm. So from, from, from his birth to his very death. Mm. Um, and you began by saying that uh, um, we normally find, think, Christ is found in other books. So we'll just, our uh, friends, I'll also read um, the book of Isaiah, yes. chapter 53, which I think is also a quintessential description of the suffering Messiah. Mm. Um, Isaiah 53, I will begin from verses 3. It says, He is despised and rejected of all men, 
a man of also rose and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god that's mm-hmm. scary you know mm-hmm. to think that it's god that's you know smote him and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgression mm-hmm. he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and that beautiful line and with his stripes we are healed so um Christ came and uh, on the cross it was it was the sin mm-hmm. of humanity mm-hmm. that threatened to separate when he says my god my god why mm-hmm. hast thou forsaken mm-hmm. me it is it is not god forsaking him it is mm-hmm. the sins that he bears on his shoulder mm-hmm. that are threatening to separate him from god right mm-hmm. so um Christ came um suffered he 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 underwent the treatment that we were supposed to undergo mm-hmm. so that we would be treated as he was supposed to be treated so mm-hmm. yeah in all these things he did it for us mm-hmm. and um he's prepared an eternity for us Amen. and Amen. as i close if mm-hmm. if if jesus christ on the cross does not do anything to you at least let it um remind you of what sin did and uh, it's it's our sins that led him there mm-hmm. right so our sin that led him there and it's love that kept him on the cross it was not the nails as as him right as of seed right mm. so if 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 jesus christ on the cross does not do anything to you at least let it break your heart let sin break your heart and yes. let it let it at least to mind you mm. that you sinning afresh mm. leads him to the cross you mm. know again yeah. yeah thank you uh there is a chapter that really uh shows the wrath of god towards sin and the fact that christ really died a very despised full de- a very despised kind of death that should lead us to his cross all the time in a in a manner that we are not sinning and i read for us the book of psalm 56 verse 6 and all the way to 8 i'm reading from the new king james version it says they gather together they hide they mark my steps when they lie in wait okay i think i'm reading the wrong okay sorry sorry it's actually psalm 58 verse 6 to 8 it says break their teeth in their mouth oh god break out the fangs of the young lions oh lord let them flow away as waters which run continually when he which run continually when he bends his bow let his arrows be as cut let his arrows be as if cut in pieces let them be like a snail which melts away as it goes let like a stillborn child of a woman that they may not see the sun this is holy anger towards sin the kind of anger that we should have because of the suffering messiah so i don't know if this is the kind or you are playing with sin or you are thinking you know christ died for me yes he died for you but it was not such an easy death and i pray that we have such holy anger towards sin such wrath towards sin irene please lead us through tuesday as you give us your very very brief comments on the monday part okay on the monday part i would like to say this from psalms 118 verse 22 we are told that the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone mm. we find that as uh, ian has rightfully said he went through so much and uh, the the lesson has really picked the areas where he went through so much psalm 22 and you are told that he was scorned he was despised they had insults at him he was pierced they even divided his his, his garment mm. you know all manner of treatment mm. was thrown at him mm-hmm. and we are told that uh the writer of the lesson said that literally did the people understand then that this worm mm. they sought to crush mm. will become their chief cornerstone mm. of the temple and se- and become the the secure sorry of the temple and secure its foundation mm. and acts 4:12 tells us that salvation is found in no one else mm. you know this capstone that was rejected yeah. it is in him we find our salvation Amen. and that Amen. there is no other name under heavens that is we can be saved that which we can be saved mm. apart from this Christ this Jesus. suffering messiah Amen. who came to bail us Amen. out Amen. and when we go to the monday part mm. the tuesday, tuesday part mm-hmm. yes sorry mm. uh the title is forever faithful to his covenant Amen. 
And I like what we are being told as we begin that blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm. This shepherd we have been talking about, this Messiah who was wounded for us, mm. he is forever faithful mm -hmm. to carry out each and every covenant mm. that he has laid down on his mm. on his word. Mm. And so as we look at this, we are we want to read Psalm 89. Psalm 89 verse 27. Just to give us a brief of what we need to look at. Psalm 89 verse 27 to 32 t says, I will establish his line forever, his throne as long as the heavens endure. Mm. If his sons forsake my law and do not follow my statutes, if they violate my degrees, decrees and fail to keep my commands, mm. I will punish their sin with a rod, their iniquity with flogging. So we are told that this, uh, this, this Christ who is coming in the name of the Lord, he has covenant for us. Mm. He has laid them down mm. and he is looking to ensure that he, he fulfills them. And so he is maintaining his love for us forever. It is a covenant that is, will never fail. It's a covenant that is established. We are told that it was established even before the foundations of the earth mm -hmm. were laid, before mm -hmm. we became what we are today before mm -hmm. we knew we would even exist he had already laid covenants he had already laid statutes for us to follow and this he is also making sure that he accomplishes them mm -hmm. for his name's sake mm -hmm. and so we are told that his throne is firm throughout generations and uh, the, the the writer says in short although the human component of the covenant failed the people could rest in the promise of God's unchanging purpose mm. through the Messiah who embodied all righteousness and salvation of Israel and of the whole world. So at times when we don't play our part, when we don't keep our part, mm -hmm. this which is faithful, many times. Yes, which mm -hmm. we don't do many mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. him, he's he will not fail. Amen. We are told that him and his word are one. Exactly. That which he promised, he that is what do. he will do. Amen. So let us be encouraged. Let us keep running to him mm. because his promises for us are sure and amen in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Forever faithful to his covenant. You know, when I was reading this part, I realized that A, when God says God is love, he is love. When God says he is kindness, he's full of kindness. He's faithful. So much such that when the sun is rising in the morning, it is rising on the wicked and the good. Meaning that even if you decide that today me I'm going to sin, the sun will still rise because God is that faithful. You know, it is us who don't keep our end of the bargain very many times and psalms 89 is just showing us that and sometimes when we're going through afflictions we are asking god but did you did you said you are this and this you know we are reminding god of his promises because we are feeling like god is so far he's forgotten he hasn't forgotten because i'm sure i know when god answers the prayers it is full of his promises kept and i don't know if you want to still keep being unfaithful or you want to be faithful. Um, Billy, as you give us your very, very brief comments on the Tuesday part, please also start us on the Wednesday. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ramona. Thank you, Irene, for belaboring the faithfulness of God to his covenant. Mm. That uh, in most uh, of our, the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, it's mm. the human part that many times fail yeah. the human uh, mm. part. Mm. But uh, there's a statement mm. that we normally make, especially when we find ourselves in difficult situations that mm. caught my attention on mm. this uh, very day, mm. Tuesday part. Uh, we normally, especially the children of God, mm. when you're going through pain, when mm. you're going through difficulty, uh, you utter words like uh, Psalms 89 verse uh, 46. And sometimes you ask Lord, how long, Lord, mm. uh, will you hide yourself forever? Mm -hmm. Will your wrath burn like fire? But you know what say? How long, Lord? I mean, how long will this thing go? How long until you mm. come to my rescue? There's even and a song, oh, Lord, Lord yeah. Jesus, how, how long? long? <laughs> how long, yeah. Yes. So, uh, and I realize that this is a statement, mm. or this is a lamentation mm. of, uh, of faith mm. in God's passing, mm. uh, in the passing nature of God's wrath. That mm. sometimes you're a... We know when saying how long, it means that uh, you have identified that, uh, like you have come to, you have realized rather, mm. or rather you have faith mm. that uh, 
this will be for a period mm. of time it will come to pass yes. so i i noted that sometimes even though we make it in despair, despair. sometimes mm. we make it discouraged mm. but it's actually a statement or a lamentation of faith that we know at the end of the day because of this forever faithful god mm. that we serve that Amen. this is for a period of time and Amen. i hope that next time we are uh, asking god how long how mm. long mm. that we may be more hopeful mm. that uh, the lord whom we we serve is faithful Amen. and this is just for a period of time Amen. Mm. Uh, on the Wednesday part, mm. we are introduced into an, to an, an eternal king of unrivaled power. Mm. And uh, when all is said and done, mm. uh, in the great controversy, we'll, at the end of it, mm. you find that uh, Jesus Christ will be victorious. That is mm. what the Wednesday part essentially mm. uh, tells us. That uh, in the end, Christ will have absolute victory over his enemies. Mm. To make the enemies a footstool is an image that reflects the custom of the ancient northeastern kings to place their feet on the necks of their defeated enemies to mm. demonstrate total dominance over them. Yet Christ's road here is not a fool, is not a tool of terror. And we find even in Psalms uh, chapter 2, mm. uh, you know we have the earthly kings of course, mm. uh, the, the president, the, mm. maybe our bosses at work, mm. but... Uh, I like uh, a counsel that is given to them in Psalms chapter 2, verse uh, 10 and 11. Mm. It says, Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve mm. the Lord with fear and rejoice with, mm. with trembling. Mm. It comes to a recognition that in, on earth, of course, there are those who are placed in the positions of authority. Mm. But they are asked to submit into this high authority, mm. who is described as an uh, eternal king of unrivaled power. Mm. And... Uh, when we trust in the king, trust in the king, rulership, sovereignty of God's, of God's kingdom, we are called to trust in the kingship, in the rulership, and the sovereignty of God's kingdom. When we mm. trust, we will depend on, on God. Mm. And I noted that uh, our dependence is a function of trust. Mm. If, let's say you, are, you find yourself in a challenge, mm. uh, when you're reaching out for help, mm. Uh, who are you reaching out to? Sometimes it means that it's somebody you, you mm. trust that will come through for mm. you in that situation. Mm. And so it's just trying to point us all into this eternal king of unrivaled power. He's mm. able to overcome all the challenges that we are going through. Mm. He's able to overcome even the earthly kings. And even the earthly kings are encouraged and are, are being uh, asked to mm. submit mm. into this high authority. Mm. And so this is the God that we serve. He has no rival in this earth. Amen. You have no rival. There's a song that hey, today I'm so full of songs. <laughs> but it's a whole nice song that you have no rival. And I love what in Psalms it says that he who sits, Psalms chapter 2 verse 4, it says he who sits in the heavens shall love. The Lord shall hold them in derision. And verse 6 to 8 it says yet I have set my king, O oh my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. And then really the best part is verse 12, which says, Kiss the son, lest he, lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. Billy has rightly told us that there are so many kings, but there is only one king. And that is what the lesson writer, or rather wanted, the lesson title wanted us to understand. Eternal king of unrivaled power. It is him and him alone who's able to do it. And you know, I was just thinking, so when we are told kiss the sun, you know, we have boot leakers during the political period. So you are pleasing this politician, this political boss, thinking that Akifika Ukodu, he will give me what? So you should stop boot licking those people and kiss the sun. The sun is, is the son of God, you know. He's, we've been told by Irene that there's a verse that says that we can only be saved by one name, and that is the name of who? Of Jesus. And this is the same sign that we are told to do what? To kiss. So you'd rather stop with licking these people who seem to be having ugly powers and kiss the right person, the one who has all the powers. 
We are almost coming to the tail end of this discussion and we'll do the Thursday part. Eternal priest in the order of Melchizedek. And you know, this is one person that keeps popping in and out of the Bible as he likes. <laughs> uh, we read the first time we meet him is in the book of Genesis chapter 14 verse 18. And it says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. Then we meet him again in the book of Hebrews. And now again, he's there in the book of Psalms. Um, I don't know who wants to start with the Thursday part. <laughs> it's an interesting one. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. Yeah, so I I love the part the the fact that when we read the when is the part, we are introduced to an eternal king. Mm. And then now when we come to the Thursday part, mm. it's an eternal priest. Amen. So Jesus is is having all everything that we would want to mm. think or imagine mm. you know he does not he is divine in nature he is a shepherd he is a king he becomes a priest you know i i just love how god has endowed this mm. this god you know mm. he is a god mm. in various aspects which we can relate to mm. even as we go through life mm. and so when we read the thursday part the eternal priest in the order of melchi zedek uh Hebrews chapter 7 tells us who this Melchizedek was, the priest was, mm. and his role. And uh, we have also read how R R Ramona has just given us what Exodus talks about when we come to this priest, Melchizedek. But then Melchizedek just gives us a reflection of who Jesus is supposed to be mm. or who he is actually in our lives and we are told that he is the king of righteousness mm. and uh, he is the king of Salem and we are told that the king of Salem met the king of peace. Mm. Jesus Christ is the prince of peace mm. and we are also told that he remains to be priest forever. Jesus is the only one who qualifies to be a priest forever and we are also told that this Jesus in as much as he's also a priest forever, mm. we are told that in the midst of his enemies, he is the one who rules. In mm. the midst of everything, he, he reigns supreme. So his, uh, his kingdom is everlasting. His, pre, his, his priesthood is a superior mark. Mm. And uh, another thing that God's oath is unchangeable and guarantees God's grace in revoking his judgment over the repentant mm. person. And we find that through Christ, as we repent, then we are forgiven of all our sins. Mm. And another thing about this Melchi Melchi Melchizedek is that in as much as Abraham went and wanted to give a sacrifice, Abraham gave a sacrifice to him. You know, the tithe we talk about, Abraham, we are told that gave the tenth. It is through Jesus Christ that this covenant is established because now when we are told to bring now the old tithe and mm. offer it into the storehouse, mm. we find that Jesus is already mm. in the storehouse. Mm. And we, have, we are told that in as much as this money is supposed to be taking care of the Levites, mm. it is taken to Christ who receives it and then we are able to do whatever we can in the, in the Christian setup in church. And so we are told that he remembers this covenant. Mm. He blesses us through this covenant mm. that he makes. Mm. And Christ upholds a superior covenant, mm. as the writer would say, that is based on God's oath, not human promises. He serves the heavenly sanctuary, mm. his priesthood, is not affected by sin or death mm. and we are also told that like the uh, like the human priest and thus he intercedes for us and saves us to the uttermost he mm. saves his people forever so Christ's royal priesthood will abolish the rule of evil mm. not only in people's hearts mm. but also in all the world so as we relate to him as a priest mm. we also need to look at what the priest will do mm. in the former days yeah. and so when we are relating to him we are coming to him mm. as one who is able to purge us of all our sins mm. as one who is able to keep his promises mm. as one who is who is superior above every other priest mm. he is the firstborn you are told he is the firstborn now in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. yes so mm. we need to now focus on christ as the real priest as the one who lives and reigns forever amen thank you so much focus on christ as one who 
will reign forever. Thank you, Irene. Ian, what are your thoughts on the Thursday part? Allow me to just say something on the Wednesday part. All right, I'll, all right. Mm. Yeah. So, um, eternal king of unrivaled power. <clears throat> mm. So, I think um, the very essence of the Wednesday part, it's, I, I know you're an author for sure, mm. or at least you're an, I know the elder is a reader. <laughs> so, if you, if a new book has come out and probably mm. somebody reads it before you, mm. or for those people who watch movies, mm. I think, okay, there are two types of, the people who, do not mind spoilers mm. <laughs> other people who the don't people want who spoilers. Do, just let me read it let mm. me get there let me watch it mm. let me meet it so i think um in the journey that we're in as we are as we are, as we're journeying through through to our final home mm. i think we have been given a lot of spoilers for sure mm. <laughs> if you go to the book of revelation mm. you know how it's a war that you know how it will exactly. end you know that finally christ is going to it's triumph going to I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, but I think it's a good thing mm. so that you know who no decided mm. to, mm. to cast you lot. Mm. So despite the many things that we are going through, we yes. live in unprecedented times, right? Mm. Um, just, a, just an example, uh, for those of us who stay very far from the city, mm. when you first take 104, as you, as you go close to, your, to, the ho- to home, of course you'll exit 104 and get into not very proper roads, mm. <laughs> probably dry weather roads and mm. exit even those ones and get into... Uh, sometimes from, from a driving perspective it's a challenge mm. but you know that with every bump the worse the road gets the mm. closer you're getting home yes. <laughs> All right? Amen. so it's, it looks like a, something that's bad but mm. you know that if I was directing somebody to my place you know that when you get into really bad roads you're know, very close here right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just, yeah, you're very close here so we know how this is going to end mm. and our, our role is to just Cast our lords on the side of Amen. Christ, on the winning side. Yeah. We know how it will end. Amen. Yes. Mm. So, eternal priest in the order of Melchizedek. I know Sister Irene has um, done a lot to uh, explain to us um, that. So, I'll just pick a part. Um, eternal priest, the mm. priesthood of Christ. Um, there's a text in uh, 1 Corinthians. It's somewhere in the Corinthians that says Christ was in the world reconciling mm. men to God. Mm. I think Christ, his priesthood... Um, He's, he's both king, you know, uh, on, on Sunday part he was the shepherd, on the Monday part he was the Messiah, mm. you know, uh, on, on the Wednesday part he's the king, mm. he's the <laughs> typically he's wearing king. very many hats, mm. and all these things, mm. like we began by saying, all these things are geared towards the salvation of humanity, mm. right? Mm. So, um, just to wrap up that the priesthood of Christ, I think he intercedes for us, he's in the heavenly sanctuary, mm. he's been there. Mm. Uh, but he's not going to stay there forever. Yes. It's time, yeah? Mm. I think in the past weeks we talked about the judgment mm. um, and we are in, much as we are in a race, it's also time, right? Mm. So we do not have all the time in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so um, the priesthood of Christ will also run out mm. and when he will take off his priestly garments, mm. he will put on his kingship garments and he yeah. will come to reign as king. Yeah. And by that time, may, may that time when mercy makes a final appeal, mm. may that time find us on the side of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey, this eternal priest. <laughs> what? Because here, yeah, me, I'm getting <laughs> more and more encouraged. Yeah. Uh, okay. So mm-hmm. thank you, Rumona. I think mm-hmm. uh, my my brother Ian and sister Irene have really done justice on mm-hmm. the Thursday part. Mm-hmm. But just to add, uh, is uh, from uh, Hebrews chapter seven, verse uh, twenty-three mm-hmm. says. Uh, also there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing mm. but he because he continues forever he has an unchangeable priesthood therefore he is also able to save to, to the, the he's also able to save to the uttermost mm. those who come to God through him Amen. since he always lives to make intercession for for them, for them. so uh, all we have been studying this week mm. we have been studying about this Jesus Christ and mm. now he comes in as that eternal priest mm. who, who was faithful mm. to our forefathers mm. and we are told that uh, him is not, uh, he, t- he continues to, he's not prevented by death Mm-mm. from uh, continuing. He still continues even in the current generation mm. and he's still interceding for us. And so while it is still time, because mm. as our brothers pointed out clearly that mm. uh, we'll not have the time forever, we'll not mm. be in that position forever, mm. I pray that we may find it useful that we may uh, go, through the, go to the Father through him. Mm. Therefore, he's also able to save to the uttermost. Mm. Uh, saving to the uttermost is saving entirely. Completely. There is no completely. Mm. So it means that there is no sin that somebody has committed mm. that while it is still time, you can't uh, take to the Father through Amen. the son, uh, through His Son, Jesus Amen. Christ. So I pray that you may take advantage of yes, this uh, eternal yes. priest mm. who 
transcends all generations mm-hmm. and is available for us mm-hmm. that we may uh, we may be found faithful when all is said and done. Amen. Thank you. Hey, that part of being saved to the uttermost is really, you know, Christ is not saving any. When He says, "I will wipe tears," He doesn't say, "I will wipe some tears." He's, "I will wipe all tears." Time is far much spent, but. Uh, we agreed as a team that Ian will give us the closing remarks. So please, Ian, give us the closing remarks. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord as we wrap up this week's study. And really as we age to almost, we are, I think, three quarter away now. Mm. We are aging to the close. Mm. Um, let me just read this excerpt. Being both Christ's prayers and prayers about Christ, the psalm provide a unique revelation of Christ's person and redeeming ministry as the as the one who is God with us. Um, goes ahead and says, Jesus is God with us in the battling prayers of... I think um, we go through different situations in the vicissitudes of life. Mm. Um, life tosses us, uh, you know, back and forth. Um, if, it's, if it's the analogy of a ship that's, that's sailing, then, mm. you know, it's, uh, sometimes it even loses its, you know, um, its way and all that. But I think our greatest comfort, regardless of what you're going through right now, mm. if you're going through a happy moment right now, praise God. If you're going through a very low moment, mm. I think our greatest comfort really um, is to know that God is with us. Amen. I think the greatest gift to different people, um, and I think we are naturally wired that way. We have a penchant for, you know, looking to the material things. Mm. If, if you have a really decent job right now with a really good pay, and your, your salary and your phone number or your account number, you are struggling to differentiate them, mm. then you sort of think that's your greatest blessing. Mm. You know, God has been really good to me. Mm. You know, to different people, to mm. parents, if you, mm. if you if you if kids excelling, yeah. you probably think this is how God has blessed me, right? Mm. All these things, whatever, whatever matters to you. Mm. But I think from this part and from what I've been able to understand, um, our greatest, the greatest gift that God has ever given to humanity is Jesus Christ Amen. and God with us. Mm. When you read um, Desire of Ages, page 25, it says Christ took the nature of humanity and mm. he will forever mm. be part of the human family. Exactly. He will forever be part of the human family. Mm. When you read the last, the last paragraph of the great controversy, it says when, when sin is passed, one, one, one sign alone remains of sin. Mm. When everything has passed away, actually we shall be changed, right? Mm. But if there's one thing that will transcend to the very end of time, it's mm. the marks of the crucifixions in the hands of Jesus Christ in his side. So, despite whatever we're going through, um, in the highs and lows of life, um, in the various seasons that, if you're not already experiencing them, now you're headed there, uh, I think it helps a lot to remember that God is with us, even in that. Amen. God is with us, Emmanuel, you know. Uh, he says that I am that I am in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. You know, the child of Bethlehem, the meek and lowly savior is God manifest in the flesh. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And to us, again, like um, Ian tells us that he says that I am the good shepherd. Like we have learned in the book of John chapter 10. I am the living shepherd. Uh, no, I am the living bread. I am the way, the truth, and the life. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. John chapter 10, verse 11, 6, verse, chapter 6, verse 51, chapter 14, verse 6, and Matthew 28, 18. I am is the assurance of every promise. I am, be not be afraid. Brethren, I don't know what you're going through, but we leave you with the assurance of the I am, the God, the creator of heaven and earth. If we, I, I keep telling myself, if God formed this world in six days, what can't he do in my life? You know, what, can't he, what is that that can't he do? What sin is that that he cannot forgive? We've been told that he will cleanse us to the uttermost. We've been told that he is the shepherd of Psalm 23. We need to lean on this shepherd. So brethren, we've really tried. We've really labored to ensure that we understand who this Christ is and that the book of Psalm also has Christ as the central character. It's not just a book of uh, complaints here and there, but 
again it is just bringing us to the point that the whole bible the major character the main character is christ our savior the good shepherd the i am the one who is able to save us the high priest you know so we can only lean onto him it's been good spending time with you we urge you to be active members of this uh, lesson study and we pray that the lord will keep you again until next week thank you so much i'll ask that irene please close for us for, with a word of prayer let's pray father we are so grateful that you have seen it fit that we read your word and be able to discuss and just to get to know how deep how deep it is and how you, O oh God, have come to take care of us in various ways. You have come as a king, you have come as a priest, you have come as a shepherd. You have come to fulfill every promise that you have written in your word. You want to bless your name, King of kings and Lord of lords, for you are loving, you are kind and caring for us. And that you keep taking care of us, even to the very tiniest details of our lives, you take care of Jehovah God. May your name be praised. How I pray, my master, that each and every viewer, each and every listener will be able to identify with you the I am. The Lord God who takes whatever uh, part we would want you to play in our lives and turn everything around for our sake, Jehovah. We bless your name this morning. We give you glory because you, O oh God, are faithful. You, O oh God, are eternal king. You, O oh God, rules forever and ever. And because your kingdom can never come to an end, we pray that you may relate with you. We pray that you may give our lives to you, O oh God, and that you may keep being faithful to you as we hope in you, king of glory, because you are a faithful God. Paul tells us that you, he became all things that you may gain this salvation. How I pray that each and everyone watching, O oh God, will identify with you, O oh God, that, Lord God, you may be able to turn their weaknesses into strength, that you may be able to supply their needs, that you may be able to fight for your children, O oh God, who are battling through various challenges, O oh God, that even as they read through your Bible and especially the book of Psalms, they are relating with you and that they are, be able, they are able, O oh God, to pick that which you want them to pick from these verses and believe in them, O oh God, and try trust in your deliverance, trust in your love, trust in you making ways for them because you are a faithful God. Father, glory and honor we give unto you. We want to commit the entire service unto your able hands that you will take over, that everyone coming to this sanctuary will experience your power, will experience breakthrough, and that we will not remain the same again. May glory and honor go back unto you, for we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.